These are our wonderful students, and they are going to tell you all about their experiences with the Honors College and through fellowships that they have had because of the Honors College. So, all right. give them a warm welcome. Who's up first? I'm up first. I'll introduce myself. <laughs> good. So, hi everyone. My name is Arielle Nicastro, and I'm a junior physics major and Buchanan Fellow from Franklin, Tennessee. I am truly honored to speak with you all today about my academic journey at MTSU. So, I want to start off with saying that my story at MTSU officially began in 2022 on April 28th, only three <laughs> days before my deadline to accept an offer from a university. On top of the enticing financial aid package, the ability to be close to home and be surrounded by supportive faculty and staff was what led me to pick MTSU. However, I underestimated how much of a positive impact taking honors courses and being a Buchanan Fellow would have on me, especially as a physics major. I later realized that my participation in the Honors College has become integral to my successes and during the past few years, from studying abroad to participating in prestigious research internships and conferences all over the country. The Honors College provides many valuable resources, such as connections, financial support, and fellowship advice. Having started physics research in my fall semester of freshman year, I presented at a variety of research conferences during my spring semester. The first place I presented at was the Tennessee Collegiate Honors Council, which was made known to me by the Honors College advisors. I had an amazing time presenting my research there and connected with many honors students whom I would unknowingly cross paths with in the future. In fact, two of these honors students were with me in my next adventure, which was my study abroad to New Zealand. <laughs> Thanks to the financial resources of the Buchanan Fellowship, I was able to fully fund my once-in-a-lifetime two-week study abroad trip to New Zealand and fulfilled the Honors Interdisciplinary Seminar requirement in the process. Also, every fall for the past two years, I spent months writing applications for prestigious STEM internships across the country. I wanted to expand my research experience to a national level and work with researchers from different universities and backgrounds. The Honors College and Undergraduate Fellowship Office played a critical role in reviewing my drafts and providing constructive feedback. I'm honored to say that my hard work paid off, and I was accepted into and participated in a Biophysics RU at the University of Maryland in 2023, and a Material Science Sully internship at Oak Ridge National Lab this past summer in 2024. This past spring, as a result of further dedication to research and hard work on my application, I had the honor of being one of 400 undergraduate researchers across the country to win the Barry Goldwater Scholarship. I am grateful to the Honors College for providing me with the resources that made me a competitive candidate for both opportunities that have significantly enhanced my academic and career prospects, both now and in the future. I would also like to tie in my campus involvement. Since the opportunity to speak about my interests and connect with others at the Honors College events has strengthened my desire to be both a leader and a mentor in my field of study. I connected with other Honors College students involved in SOAR, the Student Organization for the Advancement of Research, and I now find myself in my second year of having a leadership position there. I also became president of the Quantum Computing Club at MTSU. Combining the writing and communication skills I've developed at the Honors College with connections I've made in my research positions, I connected with quantum computing professionals who will be collaborating with my club this fall. So in summary, the education and resources I was privileged to have at the Honors College have been invaluable to my success as a student and member of the MTSU community. I look back at my college decision in 2022 and reflect on how fortunate I am to have chosen MTSU, a school that has provided me with more professional development opportunities than I could have ever imagined. I look forward to another two years full of opportunities and adventures. Thank you for your time. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. My name is uh, Rachel Boer. Um, I am a current MTSU graduate student in the Master of Arts English program, um, and I'm also a recent MTSU graduate from this past December. I just graduated with my Bachelor of Science in Foreign Language with a concentration in Japanese and minors in English Honors and Global Studies. Um, I just have to say that my experiences at MTSU, my undergraduate and my graduate experiences here, um, have been incredible. Um, the Honors College has been extremely influential in my journey and it has been extremely fulfilling, enjoyable, rewarding, fostering a sense of community with the students and the faculty, um, initiating personal growth for myself and creating limitless aspirations for the future, things that I couldn't have even imagined. So 
To start off with, my journey began in 2019, returning to school after dropping out seven years ago, well, not seven years ago now, but seven years ago then, because of life happening. And I came to MTSU initially for the Japanese program, but during customs I met Dr. Weil and he talked about the Honors College and all the opportunities that were entailed within the Honors College and the community that I could foster with my fellow students. And I knew right then that I had to be a part of this program. So throughout my time here, um, I have actually been a recipient of over 18 scholarships and fellowships, um, both undergrad and graduate level. Um, and I became an Honors Buchanan Transfer Fellow in the spring of 2020. Following this, um, I've received the Hannah Harris Study Abroad Scholarship, um, Jones Foundation Honor Scholarship, and I've been a three-time recipient of the Paul W. Martin Scholarship, um, along with many others that I will not go into listing. Um, in addition, I've completed an honors thesis in 2021 and received two Eureka grants for my research, all under the directorship and mentorship of Dr. Philip Phillips, um, the Vice Dean of the Honors College. Um, Dr. Phillips has been an incredible source of knowledge and inspiration for me, uh, motivating me to pursue greater heights um, of scholastic achievement and self-improvement by becoming even more involved with MTSU and the Honors College. Um, I was also a member of the staff of Collage, a journal of creative expression, for five semesters, with my fi final semester um, encouraging me to undertake the role of editor-in-chief. I was also inducted in, as a member of Phi Kappa Phi in 2021, um, MTSU Chapter 246, in case you're curious, um, and became an officer. Um, and I just concluded um, my first and last year of presidency um, and just turned it over to Brian Maxwell, our new president. Um, whom I have full confidence that he will fulfill his roles diligently. Um, through Phi Kappa Phi, I was really able to let my creative spirit and my love of learning soar through their motto, let the love of learning rule humanity. Um, I was able to assist with the community's children's learning library. Um, I've been able to help orchestrate and um, direct several tables at um, the cancer walks that we host here at MTSU every year. Um, and for me personally, I have people in my life who have had cancer, who have overcome cancer, who have passed from cancer. And having those types of community service available to me on campus and being able to serve my community in that way um, really makes me grateful um, and really brings a feeling of fulfillment. But I didn't stop there. <laughs> After many semesters of attempting to study abroad, I was finally able to embark on the two-week Honors in Italy program A Turna. This would not have been possible without the extra funds set aside for Honors Buchanan Transfer Fellows, enabling me to have the finances necessary to participate. Led by Dr. Philip Phillips, um, our class delved into the wondrous realm of Italian classical literature, studying the works of Virgil, Dante, and Boethius, proceeding to then visit eight different cities across Italy um, some of which including Rome, Pompeii, Ravenna, Venice, and Florence. By immersing myself within ancient perspectives, walking the streets of the Roman Empire, attending a papal mass, exploring the mosaic stars that inspired Dante, um, and listening to the old stories of two rivals, Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo, my life and my global perception has been forever changed. And then, after returning from Italy, I then embarked on an academic year-long study abroad at Kansai Gaida University in Japan. Um, I was able to stay for a full academic year thanks to multiple funding sources, um, including the International Study Abroad Scholarship, um, along with the assistance of Ms. Laura Clifford, um, the coordinator of the Undergraduate Fellowship Office. Um, with her help, I applied for and received the National Freeman Asia Scholarship in the amount of about $5,000. Um, and while in Japan, I, of course, studied and improved my Japanese language skills, um, but I also researched religious and art culture. Um, I took classes in culinary history and cuisine. Um, I joined the volunteer club. I tutored at a local elementary school, and I was even volunteer staff on campus um, for the local campus open house tours. Um, I then traveled. I took the opportunity to travel to over 20 cities. Um, I won't list them all, but Meeting all of these new people and exploring these new places is probably some of my best memories. Um, and some of the people I met there have become lifelong friends that I still interact with today. Um, I will never forget being with Kazuko-san, Satomi-san, Nikolai-san, Mi-chan, and Masaru 
sitting around the counter at my favorite izakaya, a place so small that you would miss it if you didn't know where it was, sharing a meal, stumbling over our English and our Japanese, chatting about love and life, and laughing until the midnight hour forced us to retire. Returning from Japan, my plans solidified. Studying abroad helped me realize what my priorities were and revealed myself to me in a kinder light. Going to grad school was no longer just an option, it became a necessity. Um, one that would not have been possible without the most recent fellowship that I have received. I decided to apply for the Phi Kappa Phi Fellowship, an honor bestowed on 62 people across the country, with only one person allowed to compete per university. The elimination process was grueling, the hours of edits and rewrites, the competition with my peers lingering in my head like a crutch, telling me that they are also incredible people with dreams and goals, deserving it just as much as anyone else did. Among this amazing crop of students, I was astounded and honored to be selected to represent MTSU, and it bore more fruit um, than I could have ever imagined. On June 11th of this summer, I received a Zoom invitation from Ms. Clifford, and I was blindsided when I joined, seeing every single honors staff member on the screen, and I was thinking, oh no, what did I do? Is this an intervention? What's going on? I thought that somehow they discovered how much my husband and I had been struggling and how much I had been considering dropping grad school, going to work, and paying off debts, paying off bills, and then trying to return a few years later. Then they all congratulated me as MTSU's first Marcus L. Uran Fellow, one of six recipients across the nation set to receive $20,000 for grad school. Mm -hmm. The hope that I needed to pursue my master's degree um, had been given to me in that Zoom call and it changed the course of my life once again. Um, because of honors faculty and staff like Dr. Maria Bar Bachman, Dr. Martha Hickson, and Dr. Philip Phillips, I became inspired to go beyond the bachelor's and pursue a master's degree in English. I broke through the limits of my own expectations and now my husband and I are even about to welcome a new life in this journey. Um, <laughs> And I owe much of who I am now and who I want to be to both the staff and students within the Honors College, their commitment, their honesty, their integrity, their pure dedication to student success, and their encouragement to reach higher. And I am forever grateful. Thank you. Wow. Uh, so, hello, my name is John Ferris. Good morning. Um, I didn't really write an introduction, so I'm just going to go off the cusp. Uh, so my name is John Ferris. I was born in Tennessee. I'm a junior now in the aerospace department. I have a dual major in uh, aviation dispatch and professional pilot with an honors minor as well. Um, I'm a United States Army veteran. I was infantry. Um, and yeah, so this is my speech. <laughs> All right. As I reflect on my time at Middle Tennessee State University, which began in 2022, I'm reminded of the many opportunities and experiences that have shaped my academic journey. One of the most significant parts of my experience has been in my involvement with the Honors College which I joined in the spring of 2023. This decision has made a profound impact on my time at MTSU and has been a key factor in my growth, both personally and academically. The Honors College has provided me with invaluable support, support that I know is pivotal in helping me succeed. I'd like to take a moment to thank and recognize the incredible guidance I've received from specific individuals. First, my honors advisor, my honors advisor uh, Judy Albuquerque, uh, from the very beginning, uh, uh, Ms. Albuquerque has been a constant source of encouragement and advice, uh, always ensuring I was on track and making the most of the opportunities available to me. Her thoughtful and practical guidance has been essential in navigating my academic path, and for that I am incredibly grateful. I also want to thank Laura Clifford, who has been instrumental in helping me uh, secure several scholarships, including the Gilman Scholarship. With Laura's assistance, I was able to take part in a study abroad in New Zealand, <laughs> uh, an experience that has enriched my education and broadened my global perspective. Without the financial and academic support from the Honors College, this opportunity would have been completely out of my reach. Beyond academics and scholarships, the Honors College has been a constant resource, especially as a veteran. While it can sometimes be difficult to express just how important their support has been in this regard, I can say with confidence that their flexibility and understanding of my unique needs as a veteran have been, uh, student have been critical to my success. Whether through their willingness to accommodate my schedule or for their personalized guidance, the Honors College has made my transition into university life from military life much smoother. The overall environment within the Honors College is one of opportunity, support, and growth. Whether it's through financial assistance, academic mentoring, 
or simply being a place where students can find encouragement, the Honors College has consistently provided me the resources I need to excel. Their commitment to student success is clear, and their impact on NTSU has been significant. In conclusion, I am deeply appreciative of the role of the Honors College and what it has played in my life. From the financial support that made my study abroad possible, to the academic guidance that has helped me stay on track, the Honors College has been one of my greatest resources at NTSU. I'd especially like to thank the entire Honors College team for their dedication and support. Your work has made a tangible difference in my academic journey, and I am excited to build upon the strong foundation you've helped me create. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hi. Um, I'm a Marine Corps vet, so hopefully I'll be able to read as well as he did. <laughs> <laughs> How's everybody doing today? Y'all doing all right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, for my informal intro, my name is Rasheed Cockerham. I'm originally from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. My major, <laughs> my major is biology. I have minors in uh, the sciences with a chemistry emphasis, Spanish, and honors. Uh, for my uh, formal intro, Good morning, esteemed members of the Board of Visitors, <laughs> Dean Bio, and honored guests. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today about my experiences and the impact of the Honors College that has had on my academic and personal growth. As an honor student, I've had the privilege of engaging in opportunities that have not only shaped my academic career, but also allowed me to contribute meaningfully to the world beyond the classroom. These opportunities include, but are not limited to, engaging in deeper thinking with my peers, in my honors courses, volunteering at Adam's Place as an honors ambassador and participating in biochemistry research that has challenged me to think critically and innovate alongside my faculty mentor. I would also like to take a moment to express my gratitude for the generous Paul W. Martin scholarship I received through the Honors College. This scholarship has been instrumental in supporting my undergraduate career. It allowed me to focus on my studies and less on financial concerns enabling me to take full advantage of the opportunities available to me. With the support of the scholarship, I was able to dedicate more time to work in the de chemistry department. I'm currently tutoring chemistry courses, which has been a fun and relaxing way to <laughs> relaxing. reinforce <laughs> my learning. I've also become a part of the chemistry department's new learning assistant program. Through this program, I've become an embedded peer mentor and learning guide for entry-level chemistry courses, a role I am very passionate about. This financial assistance has given me the freedom to do so, to immerse myself in my academic journey, and has been invaluable in shaping my educational path and preparing me for my future goals. Beyond the scholarship itself, the Honors College has fostered a sense of community and support that I've leaned on throughout my journey. The collaborative environment, the passionate faculty, and the connections I've made with my peers have all been crucial to my success. Even this very morning, I attended a study session with one of my friends, his name is David, in case anybody cares, from, <laughs> from when I took my entry-level chemistry course three years ago. Dr. Albakri, who I mentioned again because she deserves it, my amazing honors advisor has been instr instrumental in my growth as an undergraduate. It's rare to meet someone with such a kind heart, and she has inspired me to be a better person. If she's looking for a raise, someone should give it to her. <laughs> when I, this is going back a little bit, when I enrolled in my first honors class, Jim Kim one, can you tell me a biology major? <laughs> I was terrified of failing. The whole time I thought, I'm a Marine again, uh, we're known for being kind of dumb. I probably won't do well here. <laughs> then, then I met Dr. Fulce, my first honors professor. She was everything one could dream of in professor. <laughs> she saw my background as a tool, not a crutch. She recognized my curiosity about science, even when I didn't. In her class, I never felt like an outcast, despite being almost a decade older than all of my peers. I wasn't just a series of grades to her, I still re even this morning. I still regularly talk to her about how best to help other students. I talked to her like an hour this morning, it was kind of crazy. <laughs> this standard was upheld throughout all my honors courses. I truly believe that this sense of belonging and the encouragement to push boundaries have been integral to helping me grow, not only as a student, but as a leader. I am grateful for the opportunities I have been afforded through the Honors College, and I hope to continue building upon what I've learned here. As I move forward in my academic and professional journey, 
I know that the skills, relationships, and experience I've gained will guide me in making a positive impact when I receive my commission with the Marine Corps in May. Thank you again for your time. Thank you for your service. Thank you again for your time and your continued support of the Honors College. It has been an honor to be a part of such an inspiring community, and I look forward to seeing how we, as students and alumni, can continue to make a difference in the years to come. Thank you. <laughs> okay, good morning everyone. Good morning. good morning. My name is Izzy. I realize I didn't really write down much in my speech about myself, but I'm a junior Buchanan fellow. Uh, I'm studying neuroscience. And I was asked to speak to you all today as someone who has received an award from the Honors College, and obviously because I'm standing here before you, I gladly oblige. Um, my experience in the Honors College has been overwhelmingly positive, and so I'm always happy to take the time to talk to others about that. Actually, I'm an Honors College ambassador, so that is quite literally one of my positions on campus. <laughs> um, so the Honors College has been <coughs> instrumental in my success as a student both through the Paul W. Martin Award, which I received last spring, and through the support of its community. So I'd like to talk about both aspects of its support. So to dive into the community aspect first, um, the Honors College faculty, staff, and students have really supported me throughout my journey. My first encounter with the Honors College community was with the professors when I was a freshman, and right away I noticed that they are um, singularly dedicated to student success. What, what they teach and also helping students succeed both in the class and outside of the class. And so this is particularly true for me. I'll share a little bit of my experience. I had an honors developmental psychology professor, I think freshman year. Um, and she, through the small class size and the discussion-based nature that's typical of honors classes, I was able to build a close personal relationship with her and she is now one of my mentors. And she has acted as a reference for me on numerous occasions, um, as well as connected me to the position of psychology tutor, which I occupy today, and uh, the position of president of the psychology club, which I also hold. And these two experiences have been really foundational for me. They've helped me form a lot of valuable leadership skills and communication skills, and also more familiarity with the field of psychology and neuroscience. So not only have I received support from professors, the honors professors at MTSU, but also from the staff. So I'd like to talk really quickly about Mrs. Laura Clifford, who is my honors advisor. Um, throughout my, my experience as a student, she has been constantly connecting me to personally and professionally enriching opportunities. Um, like for example, this past summer, I did a research internship in computational neuroscience at the University of Missouri. And throughout that application process, Mrs. Laura Clifford helped me review my essay, she reviewed my resume, and she helped me with application strategies. So I benefited really greatly from her help. And also, Dean Vial uh, reviewed many of my essays as well, and my resume. And I think it's particularly striking that the Dean of the Honors College would take the time out of what I assume is a busy schedule to, um, to personally help a student, like an individual student, uh, pursue these enriching opportunities. And I don't think I would have been able to earn a spot in the Competitive Research Fellowship without their help. So not only have I help, had help from faculty and staff, but also I want to mention briefly the student community and the Honors College. Um, I believe there's a lot to be said for navigating college alongside people who will encourage you and motivate you to pursue your goals and be the best version of yourself. And students in the Honors College are very goal-oriented and driven and hardworking, and they have really helped me uh, stay on track. And beyond that, they're just a very kind and welcoming community. So pretty much as soon as I began to be involved in the Honors College, I felt welcomed and included. And um, that was a feeling that I worried I would never find on MTSU's campus because it is such a large university. But I really felt like I had found my spot, like my people within the university. So I'm very grateful to them for welcoming me. Um, and of course, as I mentioned, it's not just the community of the staff, faculty, and students, but also I received support in the form of the Paul W. Martin Scholarship last spring. Um, this has helped to ease the burden of financial concerns. Uh, I don't have to worry about how I'm going to fund my education. And with the time that I might otherwise have to spend with a job off campus, I can instead dedicate myself to my studies and to my extracurricular pursuits. 
So I have been able to, as I've mentioned, become a psychology tutor, the president of the psychology club, and beyond that, I've been able to become an officer in the student organization for the advancement of research, honors college ambassador, and a leader in my research mentor's lab. And all of these experiences have helped me gain really invaluable skills that are useful to me right now, obviously, but will be very useful in the future as well. So I intend to, I'm, I'm aiming to be a professor, and I plan to go into a PhD program after this, and so these experiences have both given me the, the courage and motivation to pursue a PhD and the qualifications to be competitive for those. And it really is, it all goes back to the Honors College. Um, I'm in their support. So I'm very grateful to the community of faculty, staff, and students and for their support in the form of the scholarship for enabling me to, to be able to pursue, pursue these experiences. Um, it's helping me now and in the future. So that, that's my speech, that's my say. <laughs> Thank you all. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Jake Salter, and um, I'm actually a Buchanan transfer scholar, um, but rather than being a transfer student, I think I'd be an untraditional student because actually I finished an undergrad in bassoon performance from Indiana University, and I decided to come back to school, and so now uh, I'm studying computer science here, this is my second year, and when I say computer science, um, actually when I was asked to speak here, uh, the first thing that I thought of was, who asked a computer science student to give a speech? <laughs> I don't know, it seems like a business major or marketing major kind of thing. Um, uh, but for those who don't know, computer science majors uh, were kind of notorious for, for being a little socially awkward and quiet and staying inside all the time. Um, uh, so when I, was, yeah, when I was asked to give this speech, my first thought was maybe to decline or make up an excuse. Um, but then I realized I actually owe the Honors College a lot, and uh, I hope that overcoming some of my fears today and speaking to y'all um, is a way of, of giving back a little bit that I owe. Um, so as a member and a beneficiary of the MTSU Honors College, I'm proud to report it's success. Um, and when I say success, I, 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 I'm saying something very specific, and I refer to the ideals listed in our, our, our college's creed, which are character, creativity, commitment, curiosity, discipline, faith, honor, and integrity. And these are all ideals that I've, um, sorry, which are all ideals that uh, as Buchanan Fellows we recite in our inauguration. Um, and I've seen these upheld at the Honors College by professors, by staff, and by students. Um, and just last week, I was, I was lucky enough to, to attend the Buchanan Transfer Fellow inauguration for the next uh, uh, Transfer Fellows. And as part of the ceremony, our Dean Vile read just a little bit off about each student, so their name, the school that they came from, and then a sentence or two about something that they've done. And I was so happy to hear that uh, almost all of them were volunteers at homeless shelters, or food banks, or vets, or they were community le leaders, or innovators. Um, and I think that shows that our class of incoming fellows uh, do contain integrity, character, and commitments to their community. To me, what is special about being a Buchanan Scholar is not just providing funding to these great students to attend college, but also a curriculum that promotes curiosity and creativity. Part of our curriculum as honor students is writing a thesis, and the very idea of writing a thesis inevitably requires exploration of our selected subjects on both a wide and a deep scale as well as communication, communication with experts in our field. On top of this, creating a thesis requires so much time and effort that the only way to find the motivation to complete it is if we're working to, towards something that we personally care about. And so in this way, I think a thesis becomes a way of exploring not just our field, but ourselves and our passions and what we care about as well. To make this a little more personal, I'll quickly address why I feel so grateful to the Honors College. When I enrolled at MTSU, I was not only transitioning schools, but I was, uh, I was transitioning states, I was transitioning majors, and I, I, didn't, uh, I hadn't taken a, a math or science class, I think, since 2016 when I was in high school. So it was uh, quite a big gap. Um, so yeah, basically I had uh, um, uh, no background in, in computing technology, uh, but I had an idea that um, I know computing technology is a, uh, is a very powerful tool, and just like any other tool, it can be used uh, for good or bad, and um, I, I, just, I just came specifically with an idea that I, I want to use computing technology to do something good, um, uh, but I, of course I had no idea where to, uh, where to start. Um, and 
the Honors College uh, was immediately there for me. And within a few weeks, um, I was already uh, meeting one-on-one -on -one with professors in pursuit of a thesis, asking them questions. What do I read? What do I need to know? What kind of jobs do computer scientists even do? Building these personal relationships with knowledgeable mentors is the way one becomes a true scientist and participates in our disciplines. Additionally, in September of last year, with help from the Undergraduate Fellowship Office at the Honors College, Laura Clifford, um, I applied to become a Fulbright MindTex Global Link intern, and after being selected, I spent all of this last summer in Quebec, Canada. There, I researched the recent history of pollination in a small town in Quebec to determine uh, how rising temperatures and a changing climate are affecting pollinating plants. With a combination of database and data analysis tools, I was able to both write a report and generate a calendar that predicts the pollination season to warn citizens of allergy ha hazards. This was so transformative to me that on returning to Tennessee, I realized I actually had to change my schedule for the semester uh, because I, 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 I have such a specific idea of what I want to do now and the tools that I need. Um, uh, I can confidently say that as I approach my graduation this May, I have a very firm idea of my future thanks to the opportunities that the Honors College gave me. So thank you all. I guess I have a question for the two uh, uh, veterans on the on the panel. Yes. Uh, are you uh, have you used the Daniel Center here and familiar with that? And would you comment? Uh, there may be some people in the room that uh, don't know that we have one of one of the best uh, veteran centers uh, in the country here on campus. Did mm -hmm. you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Go uh, I go to the Daniel Center every day. Yeah, I love it. They are extremely helpful, extremely friendly. I'm on a first name basis with essentially all of them there. Considered working there. Um, super helpful. I've had kind of an interesting approach to college that has like kind of changed my paths uh, in terms of like how I'm paying for it and also doing a double major and they've been right there right by my side helping me every step of the way. Um, I can't like think of any names specifically but everyone there just does a fantastic job. They, they care a big time and just like the Honors College you know they're there for student success and they exceed far beyond any standard so. Thank you. Uh, coming in from out of state, I, I was so confused with MTSU. And if it wasn't for the Daniel Center getting me set up, I, I don't know what I would have done. And the Daniel Center is amazing also. Along with the, the Daniel Center in conjunction with the Honors College is like a match made in heaven. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's great to hear. Isabel, for the older ones in the group, could you just explain computational neuroscience? Just a little bit about what you're studying, what the uh, purpose, application, direction is, and then would you also just make an observation about the use of chat GPT and what you see with your, your comrades We've here? We've only got so 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I can't speak as much to that as you would probably prefer because it, it was like an internship in computational neuroscience, but that's a little outside of my, my realm, generally speaking. Um, so the internship that I did really, the project I worked on was not directly related to um, like data coding, data programming. We, we worked on Python. Um, and then, so we had like a boot camp at the beginning, and then my project was more um, like autism research, and it didn't involve that as much. So, and as, honestly, I don't think computational neuroscience is for me. What, that's sort of what I learned. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's, that's, that's valuable knowledge. But I love neuroscience, maybe just not the computational portion. So. Okay. That's that's my answer. <laughs> and, and is Chat GPT used widely with students now, or is it still something that's uh, just kind of in the? In the I I used it actually for the first time this summer. Um, the program coordinator encouraged us to use it to explain coding. Um, like we would copy paste a code in there and have Chat GPT explain like what all the elements of the coding were doing. So I think it can be very valuable for that sort of thing. Um, obviously not like write an essay, that sort of thing. But that was that was the first time I've used it, although I noticed a lot of the other students were quite familiar with it. So I think it's growing in prevalence. Thank you. Rashik, you from Winston-Salem, did I hear that right? Yes, sir. And you obviously chose MTSU for a reason. Why? But why didn't you choose NC State? Uh, right, right there in your backyard. At the time, I was living in Nashville. Uh, but I was still 
technically living in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. But so I had moved already and I saw MTSU, I was like, that looks like a really cool college. Mm -hmm. And I actually looked more into it and I spoke with the Daniel Sutter, uh, I spoke with the Honors College and uh, they got me set up and I really enjoyed it. Well, I would have been, if I was still in the Navy, I'd have been your chauffeur to drop you off. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you know, so good luck with your commissioning and, yeah, I and future you. career. Did, did I answer your question? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah I just you, you were here and this attracted you. Yes. And uh, uh, all six of you seem to kind of have your acts together. And, and that's, I, I, I'm waiting for John on here to bring a, an I honor say, student. I put on a great and, show. <laughs> I'm glad that's the, the, the picture you got. <laughs> well, perception, you know. Um, but look, everybody in this room's written a check of some kind for the future, which is what you are. You are the future. When you get your jobs and your regular paychecks. Don't forget to write your check for the future behind you. Because, it, because if you're going to have, we, we, we just heard Mark here tell us write bigger checks. <laughs> and and it's very nice to hear and it's his job. But the truth of the matter is that lecture could be given to every honors student at some point. Because I heard everyone at this podium talk about I and me and I and me and I and me and how thankful you were that everybody had invested so much in you. And we're happy to do that. We didn't know you when we wrote the checks. We didn't know where the money was going. It's an article of faith that you were going to take that money, invest it in yourselves, and then produce better citizens and a better world. Because the world's screwed up, guys. You know, just look out the window. So when you get to this position, don't forget to look at those behind you and return something of the hard sweat work that you're going to do for Fergola Starbucks one week and write that $10 check because those coming behind you are going to need the support even more because it's going to get harder. It's not going to get easier. It's going to get harder. Anyway, it's very nice to see that you have put the time and talents that everyone in this room has invested in you to good purpose. Uh, you give us a belief that the faith we have, uh, the leap of faith we have taken in your future is not misplaced. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you don't mind, I can actually, I would like to respond to that a little bit. Um, just because I was sitting here mulling over my head how little I actually said about giving back and regretted say, not saying as much because the Honors College has given me so much and it is actually what inspired me to pursue grad school. When I first enrolled at MTSU as an undergraduate student, my goal was to graduate with a degree. I did not look farther. I just wanted to complete the degree that I'd never finished. Um, and throughout my time here at MTSU and in the Honors College, I found inspiration through the staff, through the students, through my study abroad to pursue something a little bit greater so that I could give back more. Um, I come from a background where when I first moved to Nashville, I was homeless. I had almost no resources and no job. Um, one of the things that is really big to me is literacy because I did not know how to create a budget. I didn't know how to apply for a loan. I didn't know um, how to create a resume. I didn't know a lot of those things. And I'm finding more and more that a lot of students don't know how to do those things. Um, I relearned, I learned how to create a, a cover letter, a CV, a resume, all here at MTSU mm -hmm. as I'm pursuing greater heights for myself. Yeah. Um, and that is something I want to do to help others because just simple like soft skills like that will take you so much farther. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that like specialized skills won't, but I think soft skills are more versatile, they're more adaptable. It's what the Liberal Arts College um, promotes, <laughs> is how versatile and adaptable that we are. Um, and I've noticed that in the jobs, because right now I currently work with Matthew Hibden in social media. Um, but this past fall, before I graduated, I worked a federal work study with Ms. Laura Clifford um, in the undergraduate fellowship office and realize how rewarding helping other students apply for scholarship money 
and editing their essays and their resumes and their CVs and helping them attain money for their goals and their dreams, how fulfilling that was. Um, so I, I have pictures and images of what I want to do to help other people now because of my experiences here. Well, Rachel, I will tell you, it doesn't take much. No. In 1977 or so, I was probably the first honors student to give a donation back to the college. It was a hundred dollars. Look around you. Look at how it's changed. It doesn't take much, guys. It just takes consistency. Jake, are you doing anything with uh, artificial intelligence? Um, I've taken a class on neural networks. Um, I don't have any specific projects um, related to it right now, but um, it is a, a potent tool. Is there anything specific you're wondering about it? Uh, no, at Summer College uh, this, this year, uh, the entire focus was on artificial, artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. and uh, it's pretty amazing stuff. Mm -hmm. Some of it's scary. It's scary. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think just like any, I, I mentioned this in my speech, I, I think uh, it's a tool, and we have a really important decision to make right now of, of uh, how we're going to handle it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Can I also add something to your point that you made earlier about giving back? Um, I mentioned I want to be a professor, and a big part of the reason that I just, I mean, I never saw myself as, as like a, a teaching type or a leader before I came to MTSU, but part of the reason that I wanted to be a professor is because of like what's been invested into me by all my honors professors and how much that's helped me grow. I mean, I like to think I'm going places now. I, I think I have a better future. Um, and so I, I love the idea of being able to to give back to other people and help mentor them along their journey since my professors have been so instrumental for me. So. You know what might be interesting? We didn't ask you to do this. And I know Rachel, of course, I've read her thesis, one of the best, by the way, I've had in a long time. Uh, but I wonder if each of you might just tell if you've done a thesis or if you're working on a thesis, what the topic is. That might be of interest to people. And I can start first on this end. So I haven't started my thesis yet, but I believe that I just joined a project that I will complete my thesis in. So being a physics major, I have a requirement to do a physics thesis, and it will also dually count for the honors thesis. And this will be in synthesizing zinc oxide nanorods and applying it to electrochemical sensors. So it's basically taking a step in improving the way that we apply like. So basically, <laughs> it's not <a> old <laughs> Let me see. I You're doing a, fine. Yes, <laughs> I wrote a Eureka proposal on it, and I'm really excited to hear back within probably the next week or two. And my, the reason I'm so excited about it is that you can apply this improved material to technologies. And zinc oxide is used in so many forms, such as like cosmetics and healthcare purposes and nanotechnologies and being part of some of that development is something that really makes me excited about like, just the field that I'm in. Mm. Well, I'll go next. Um, I, mine is completely the opposite. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I did a research and creative thesis, um, completed it in the fall of 2021, so I'm re rehashing my brain a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, no, I'll never forget. It was a very um, rewarding process. Um, I did research on the poet Gary Snyder um, from the Beat Generation and what I did was I did analytical research on his poetry and specifically poetry that he wrote labeling it as haikus and um, part of, it wasn't actually part of my thesis but I wanted to do it as a follow-up so part, included in my thesis is I wanted to write haiku um, myself with the English language um, utilizing these words called kigo. So in Japanese, when they're writing a haiku, um, they utilize words called kigo, which are seasonal elements. Um, the word moon, when it's used in a haiku, signifies fall. The words, um, if you use hanabi, which is fireworks, it typically signifies the new year. There are specific words and elements that are inserted within a haiku, and it gives it the environment of the season, um, which creates the entire emotion of the haiku itself. But within translation, some of that is always lost. And so I wondered, can we write English haiku using English words and Kigo native to the North American environment? 
Um, and so I did some research and analytical um, uh, observations on Gary Snyder's poetry, read several of his books, um, analyzed several of his poems, and then proceeded to write a few haiku myself, creating English Kigo native to our North American continent. Um, and then when I went to Japan after receiving the Freeman Asia Scholarship, this was just a follow-up in my thesis because of my pure curiosity, is I wanted to see if I could write poetry after my, ja after my trip to Japan with Japanese influences integrated in there, because I'd never been to Japan before. I only knew about Japan from here, in this perspective, and so I wanted to write a set of haiku with only my na North American experiences, and then I wanted to write sets of haiku afterwards, and some of which I even translated into Japanese, um, because I actually was able to take some haiku workshops over there with Japanese haiku poets. Um, so that was really fascinating, and it was really interesting to be able to, to do that. I love poetry, I love writing. Currently taking a creative writing course with Dr. Arroyo, he's amazing by the way. Um, so, you know, English stuff. <laughs> Wait, how long was your thesis? Um, I believe the total was like 86 pages. Wow. Okay. Um, and then my follow-up, my Eureka grant was a po was a, a research project that me and Dr. Phillips did on eco poetry. Um, and we even we I, I had Gary Snyder in there, but also included um, a couple analysis um, from our most recent poet laureate Ada Lamone. Um, and her poetry was, is also very interesting if you've never read it. Um, I think that totaled about 46 pages. So when the professor says to write a 10-page research paper, I'm like, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't uh, wrote my thesis yet, um, but my plan right now is I have a lot of interest in aviation safety, and especially when it comes to AI and learning. Uh, I think aviation has already been an industry that's done really well in terms of getting ahead of the curve with uh, AI, even like doing simulations for years and years and years. And I think one of the coolest things about AI is being able to have kind of a personalized teacher. Um, right now it's definitely not at that level, but I see it in the future essentially becoming a perfect teacher that can teach just about anything. And how that relates to aviation safety, um, you know, everyone learns so differently and aviation safety is uh, it's a really big field, and because of that, we, like, we're, MPSU's airport, we've had only, like, two incidences in 20 years. Um, so, I just want to mix those two together in my thesis research, and, yeah, that's kind of the plan so far. Yeah. Okay, after that, mine's going to sound kind of, sound kind of crazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> currently, we're analyzing and characterizing the, um, the polysaccharides in hemp, specifically uh, the cannabis sativa of Dora 17, and we're trying to see which specific polysaccharides match up with other polysaccharides so we can analyze um, anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties and hopefully send that to a biomedical lab and have them analyze it further. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Who, who, who's your faculty member? Uh, Dr. Paul Klein. Oh, Dr. Klein. Okay. How do you like the science building? Oh, I love it. It's okay. <laughs> I'm there all the time. <laughs> there all the time. Uh, my research is, we're researching autism essentially using mice. The most common question I get is how do you give a mouse autism? Um, which they don't, they, these mice don't actually have autism. What we're doing is we're testing oxytocin, which has been proposed as a treatment for the decreased social motivation that's often seen in those with autism. Um, but results in clinical trials so far have been pretty inconsistent. And so further research is needed. So my project is uh, studying oxytocin's effects on maternal motivation. So uh, it's if there's an obstacle between a dam, which is a, a mouse mother, and her pup, you know, what lengths will she go to to retrieve her pup and how fast? And then how does oxytocin manipulate that maternal motivation up or down? And so, so oxytocin, I should preface, is known as like the social hormone. And paradoxically, in my lab, we've seen that dosing mice with oxytocin actually decreases their social motivation. So we're further investigating that. But it, it, has, um, it has impacts on not just autism treatment, but also it's been proposed potentially as a treatment for drug addiction because of its effects on the motivational system. And um, also on like a treatment potentially for like obesity and, and because, again, of its effects on the motivational, motivational system specifically motivation towards food. So 
a lot of a lot of potential applications for my research. Sure. Um, I think uh, the title for my thesis proposal was uh, optimization through offloading of voxel pose estimation. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. Um, I, I, essentially, what, I, what I'm interested in is, um, is a technique called offloading, where we take a program that is run on a single computer and uh, splitting it into parts and sending it to computers uh, on, in the same local area network and having them communicate and, and send like a, if, when this program finishes, sending the information that's needed for this program to send to this program, which ideally would uh, speed up an application and reduce its uh, energy electricity uh, consumption. So you're crypto mining, is that right? <laughs>